2015-16 Castrol BMW Race Driver Series was held in conjunction with the Toyota Racing Series New Zealand Motor Cup at Hampton Downs. Having come from humble beginnings when a like-minded group of enthusiasts started the E30 Series in 2005, to now include two further classes, the two litre and the open class, which is split into A and B. The series continues to fill grids and thrill hearts wherever it goes, and here at Hampton Downs was no different. So this is the Group 1 E30 race. This is the final race of the day. The grid position's based on points over the meeting, so that means that number 104, the yellow car there in the middle of the shot, that's Ian Power. He gets a good start, but coming around the outside of him is uh, 63 of Grant McPhee, so he'll go into the the lead 21 Rob Binding will slot into third place you can see it is very very wet here at Hampton Downs and it's been that way on and off all day so it's the 21 of Binding leading as they work their way into turn two and head up over the hill here at Hampton Downs once again a huge field of E30s split into two groups as they usually are this is group one and this is Rob Binding 104 in second place is Ian Power. Then we go back to the 616 of Graham Linton. Starting to make his presence felt, going round, uh, or trying to get round the inside of him is Matt Griffin. Now he is looking to improve his position. 104 Power still sitting there in second place, but Binding's got away from them a little bit. Oh, and Power just running a little bit wide through the hairpin, and that's going to cost him a few spots, I would think. Griffin sneaks up the inside, so do does the 616, and that is Grant Linton. So Linton improves his spot. Power's recovered remarkably well, though, but they're all chasing the 21 as they head down into the uh, the big sweeper at the top end of the circuit here at Hampton Downs. Here comes a move up the inside from Power to get around at Linton, but he can't make it stick. Matt Griffin there on the outside side this time tries to make his presence felt and round goes number 90 and that is Ross Wilson well that's not the very best place to spin as the leaders head up over the top and that just completes one fairly exciting lap in this group one race here at Hampton Downs it's all part of the TRS uh, New Zealand Motor Cup race Griffin down the inside this time of power and that's the position the speed factor BMW moves up one so he goes into third place now Power goes back into fourth. There is the triple nine of Griffin just in behind him. It is uh, Power in the 104, and in behind him it's number 177, and that's Alex Sheary. So already the gap starting to open up a little bit here. Binding it is, continuing to lead. This is John Thompson, number one. 6-3. Each time we go back to the hairpin now. Grant Linton on your screen. Right in behind him, number 177, Alex Sherry. So Sherry's closed up the gap just a little bit. So Brining out on his own, but then it's anybody's guess as to be who second and third for the moment. Griffin on the outside. Grant Rowe moves through into second place now. Then it's Griffin. Still the 21 leading, you see the wipers going, still rain tumbling down here at Hampton Downs. The final race of the weekend for the E30s, Group 1. Top end charts coming here from Rowe, can he make it stick? They're side by side, door handle to door handle across the stripe. Now they disappear into the off camber turn one here at Hampton Downs and it is Rowe that goes into the front and trying to get around him is Matt Griffin and getting just a little bit sideways and that's cost Brining so he goes back into third place well one minute he was winning and the next minute he's back in third into turn two they go now it is the number 60 leading it that's Grant Rowe Matt Griffin in second place well, he's finished on the podium a couple of times in the national championship series or the BMW series love to do the same here this is round four of six in the championship, and now it's a three-horse race. Grant Rowe leads it. Matt Griffin is second. Then it's Rob Bining in third. Oh, and this time it's uh, Rowe that runs a little bit wide, and that's allowed uh, the 21 to come back into contention, and he might be in second place. He is by the time they come into the braking area for the big sweeper at the top end of the circuit. But we've got a new race leader. It's the Speed Factor BMW, the triple nine of Matt Griffin. 
So around the sweeper he comes and heading up the hill this time. And he's already got quite an advantage. So uh, that all comes from the drive coming off the corners because these cars are so very, very equal in performance. Comes down to a bit of fine fettling and a whole lot of driver ability. And Matt Griffin's got plenty of that. Checkered flag comes out and it is Matt Griffin getting the win. In second place, it will be the 21 of uh, Vining. And in third place, it'll be Grant Rowe. Fourth place will go to Ian Power. And in fifth, it'll be Graham Linton. In sixth place, it's Alex Sherry. And in seventh, number 183, and that's John Thompson. So two-litre action for you here at Hampton Downs. This is the final race of the day for the two-litre class. Decided on uh, points for the meeting. The one to watch for, though, is number 66. That's Ash Blewett, but it's Peter Ball that gets away. The 167 in the PNS Auto Centre BMW. Second place looks like it'd be Andrew Sharp at the moment. We'll get a better look as he come a little bit closer. Bit of a slow start from Chris Spark meant that uh, both Andrew Walker and Rick Donaldson had to take a base of action, but they're back in the uh, the mix as well. There is the 66 of Blewett. Now, Blewett doing double duty this season because he's racing in the Toyota 86 series as well, and he's currently leading that. Interesting situation in the two leaders because Andrew Walker on... 1487 points and Graham Ball on 1488 as close as you like in the points. Andrew Walker's in this race, Graham Ball isn't, but his father Peter is, and his father Peter is leading at the moment. It's Tony Lovelock just working his way out of the hairpin and heading down to the big sweeper. Ash Blewett trying to make a move on the man in second place. That is Andrew Sharp and gets the job done. So the E-Link BMW goes back behind Blewett. Now Blewett, oh, and um, Sharp getting very, very sideways. He was lucky there wasn't anyone very close to him because they would have pounced there. So Sharp uh, breathes again, stays in third place now. Now Blewett was having trouble with overheating in his car. And it certainly cost him in the reverse grid race. Let's see if he can get through this one at the moment. He is tailing Peter Ball. In fact, he's closing down Peter Ball. Out of one they come, heading down into two, and Blewett has a good long look up the inside and gets Ball under braking. So Ash Blewett back in the front as they head up and over the top again. Peter Ball in second place, the PNS uh, Auto Center BMW, the white car on your screen there. Blewett comes into this, as I said, really hot from driving two classes over the summer. This is the battle uh, further down through the field. Have a look out there for number 37. That's the BMW Touring of uh, Joanne Johnson. She leads uh, that bunch. Noel Irvine, number triple two there. That's the bunch toward the back of the field. As they make their way through turn number one. You'll see some of the uh, refugees, if you like, from the E30 class in this one as well. There's Joanne in the station wagon, the Touring. Heading towards the hairpin now, no real change there, although a big move coming from number 82, Alex Schultz. This is the race leader though, and he's in danger of catching these people and putting them a lap down. That's the pace that uh, Ash Blewett is showing at the moment. And there he is in the back of the shot. So very shortly, he'll be on to the back of uh, this uh, slower group. Rowan Anderson will be the first one he picks up. And there is Peter Ball. And it doesn't look to me that Peter Ball's got any answer to Ash Blewett this time around. So it looks like the, um, the 66 is held together. I did mention that they'd had some overheating problems. We might have put that behind them now. As Blewett tries to hide in this group of back markers. Fred Barton in there as well, so too Kevin Yule, Trevor Wilson. Everyone fighting for racing room, but it's Ash Blewett that will see the chicken flag first as he rockets up the hill here at Hampton Downs. So Ash Blewett has the final say in the two-litre class here at the New Zealand Motor Cup meeting. He wins it. In second place, it will be Peter Ball. And in third place, it'll be Andrew Sharp. Fourth place will go to Andrew Walker. And in fifth, it'll be Rick Donaldson. It was good to get on top of the issues that we've had over the weekend with a little bit of cooling trouble, which meant that we had to back off there in the in the second race in the handicap and sacrificed a few positions there. But yeah, um, yeah, pleased to have the car running well and take the win overall for that one. No, Ash is really quick, and what's nice with Ash, you can trust him 
to race with him side by side. And he's a real gentleman to race with. Plenty more action still to come here from Hampton Downs for the Castrol BMW Race Drivers Series. Welcome back to Hampton Downs. The good news is the rain has abated for the moment as we get set for the final race of the day for the E30s in Group 2. Have a look on the front row, Richard Oxton and Mark Crompton. Mark Crompton gets the best of the starts, or does he? Because powering from good position one is Richard Oxton, so Oxton will lead them. Crompton through in second place, and then it is Aaron Hodgson, and I'm pretty sure this is the first meeting that Aaron hasn't had his rookie stripes on, so he's pretty new to the E30s, but he's doing a fantastic job. In fact, he wants to argue about the spot there with um, the 67 of Crompton. As this big field heads up and over the top, Richard Oxen, though, in control for the moment. Big move coming there from Matt Seaton. Keep an eye on him. As this front group heads down to the hairpin for the first of eight times. Grid positions decided by points of the meeting. Oxton in the front, Hodgson wants to have a piece of him, but he's just going to leave the door open a little bit wide there and allow Crompton to go through, is he? Oh, yes, he does. And I think going with him was Matt Seddon. I'll have a look when they come a little bit closer. 47, Philip Smirthwaite in the mix as well. So, there is the 72 of Matt Seddon. So he didn't quite get the job done. So it's Oxton from Hodgson at the moment. There is Smirthwaite just on the back of that bunch. And then I think it'll be Laurie Griffin, and that's Matt's father in the next bunch and in behind him maybe uh, number three Anthony Munns there he is in the blue E30 this is the race at the front of the field and it's the auto colour European E30 of Aaron Hodgson car number 38 that's got in the front Richard Oxton through in second then we go back to the 67 of Crompton so Hodgson not only is um he's pretty new to the E30s but he's had a sensational series so far because he's uh, leading the points on 1646 from Mark Crompton and at the moment he's leading the race from Richard Oxton and Mark Crompton in third place this is round four of six for the Castrol BMW race driver series in the E30 competition there is Philip Smirthwaite he's been around pretty near since the beginning of this amazing race class Hodgson, though, trying to defend that lead. Here comes the pressure, though, from Richard Oxen. It's a long way to go around the outside, and Oxen knows that. He comes from a karting background and knows all about close quarter racing, too, and that's what we've got here as they come round this big sweeper at the bottom end of the circuit here at Hampton Downs using the 2.6 configuration, and it's a straight-out drag race of the E30s as they get to the strike. Is Oxen going to go through? and take the front running down into the braking area for turn number one they come Oxton's got the nose in front but Hodgson's got track position Oxton's going to live out there a little bit longer and he goes into the front so Hodgson goes back into second but Oxton runs it wide and takes to the grass now can he pull it up he's going to lose one two three maybe four positions and in all that going on, it's the 67 that Mark Crompton that's kept his head and now has the lead. Hodgson goes back into second. Then we go back to Matt Seddon in third. Then in behind him, it is Smith, mate. And then in behind him now, it is Anthony Munns. Now, where does Richard Oxton join in? There he is, back in about seventh or eighth place, just in behind Laurie Griffin. So he's got a bit of work to do if he wants to uh, take maximum points here at uh, Hampton Downs. Watch for the 67, just got the nose in front. This is Mark Crompton, right in behind him. It is Aaron Hodgson in the 38. Then we go back to number 72, and that is Matt Seddon. Behind him, Phil Smirthwaite. And it looks like behind him, it's number three, and that is Anthony Munns. So quite a good little battle group. Here comes the big charge, though. Down into the big sweeper at the top end of the circuit. Aaron Hodgson wants a piece of the 67 of Mark Crompton. And they will be door handle to door handle, side by side. In fact, there might have been a bit of a touch there as they straighten up and run up the hill. Who's got the better of it on the outside? It is Aaron Hodgson, the rookie. Inside of him, it is number 67, and that's Mark Crompton. Crompton's got track position, and in this as well is Matt Seddon. Seddon's going to play a part in this too, and Richard Oxton right back there. Richard Oxton's going to go past Seddon and slip back 
back into third place. Seddon will go back into fourth. Smithwaite goes back into fifth. And then in behind him, it's uh, Anthony Munns and then Ant Bielsham. Right. Trying to get it sorted out as they head up over the top through turns three and four. Running a little bit wide this time, it's Crompton, but he pays. Uh, well, he doesn't really pay the price. He doesn't lose the spot to Seddon. I thought he was going to. Here comes Smurfwaite on the inside. They'll be three abreast going into the corner here as they head towards the hairpin once again. Three is in this two. That's Anthony Munns. What an exciting race we've got here as the uh, closing episode, if you like, of the E30 competition. Group two, the final race of the day. Who's going to win it? You pick it. At the moment, it is the 38 of Aaron Hodgson out in the front. Right in behind him, brilliant recovery from Richard Oxton, second-generation driver, son of the famous David, of course. Comes from a karting background, as does the man in the front of the field. So they know all about close quarters racing. In third place, it's the 67 of Crompton. Right behind him, it's the 72 of Seddon. And in behind him, it's Smirthwaite. And then it's number three, and that is uh, Anthony Munns. And then there's a bit of a gap. 38 heading towards the stripe once again. This is Aaron Hodgson. He's going to pick up the maximum points here in the final E30 race of the day. In second place, well, I think it might have been Richard Oxton. So what a recovery from Oxton. Third place goes to Mark Crompton. And in fourth place, it was Matthew Seddon. Behind him, Philip Smirthwaite, then Anthony Munns, Ant Belsham and Laurie Griffin. Final race for the open class, split into two classes, A and B, easily distinguishable. Have a look on the rear window. Uh, the A class has a yellow disc with an A in it. The B class has a green disc with a B in it. It is Kent Bajant that goes into the front from Andrew Nugent. Yes, it's the Kent Bajant, the 1985 New Zealand Touring Car Champion. Raced all around the world. And back in it here, that car is a uh, E92 M3 out of Norway, V8 powered. E92 M3 out of Neil Orport shop is the one in the uh, control of Andrew Nugent. Just a kiss of front guards there as they work their way into turn number three. And just caught a little bit wide as Bajant, and he's going to pay the price because going up the inside of him was uh, Andre Mortimer by the look of it. So he'll move through into second place now. Bajant goes back into third. Then it's Warwick Mortimer, and it looks like behind him the triple seven of Bob Seibright. And then behind him, Michael Starnes. Michael Starnes being the first of the B-class cars. In fact, it says Warwick Mortimer up ahead of his son. So I apologise to Warwick because he's up in second place at the moment. There is the number one. This is Rob Bergeron from the Waikato. This is a um, GTR replica wide body. There is Michael Starnes, first of the B-class cars. Out in the front, though, it is still Andrew Nugent. Warwick Mortimer up into second place. The charge coming from Kent Bajant. There he is in the 15. Behind him, Andre Mortimer in the Gold Force 10 BMW. And then it's Rob Bergram carrying uh, the number one. Now, he is the defending champion. He's also the points leader. Big move coming up the inside of Andre Mortimer there from Cybright. So he moves up a spot. So Bergram is the points leader here in the 2015 season. He's the defending champion, as I said, in Class A. Look at this battle going on here between Cybright and Andre Mortimer. Nose to tail at the moment. Bergam just getting a little bit sideways. We go back to the front of the field. No real change. Still Andrew Nugent, who got his start in the BMW Series, in the E30 Series, but he's certainly moved up since there. Part of BM Racing. Bureau seats are the sponsor. There's Andre Mortimer. There's Bergam. There is Cybright in the 777. And right in behind him, the first of the B-class cars, and that is Michael Stance. Now, the difference between the A-class and the B-class, among other things, is uh, the A-class cars run on racing slicks, whereas the B-class cars run on legal uh, groove slicks, if you like, road legal groove slicks. The other difference is the A-class cars can be uh, V8s and can be turbocharged, whereas the B-class cars have to be four- or six-cylinder engine-powered cars. So that's uh, some of the differences. Well, they said that the open class racing would bring the um, stars and their cars out to play, and that's certainly what we see here at Hampton Downs today. Bergen's got all he can handle from Andre Mortimer at the moment as they work up and head towards the hairpin once again. No change at the front of the field, still Andrew Nugent. So two of the new BMW E92 M3s running one and two at the moment because Ken Bateson's got around uh, Warwick Mortimer to move through into first place. Warwick in the E46, Andre in the E92. 
both of them carrying Gulf Force 10 signage here at Hampton Downs. Headlights ablaze on Warwick Mortimer's car just to let Kent Bajant know he's right there. What he's forgotten to know is that Rob Bergren's dived down the inside and moved up a spot, and he will take in to third place, I think, as they complete another lap here at Hampton Downs. Great scrap going on here between Bob Seibright and Ian Davidson. And right in behind them, Michael Starnes. This is Starnes in the B-Class Placemakers Beamer. Also in the beat class is Ian Davidson, just up ahead of him. This is Sybright. Up and over the hill they go through turns three and four here at Hampton Downs. Race leader continues to be Andrew Nugent. Final lap, has Rob Bergren got anything for him? He's the defending champion. Has he got something here for Andrew Nugent? Down into the sweep before the very last time. BMW E92 M3 versus BMW E92 M3. One from Norway, one out of Neil Allport's workshop. And it's the one from Neil Allport's workshop that's in the front as they head to the uh, flag this time. Andrew Nugent's going to pick up the maximum points here. The top end charge is just a little bit too late from Rob Bergren. He'll be content with second. And in third place, it will be Kent Bajan. Fourth place will go to Andre Mortimer. And in fifth, it's his dad, Warwick. It's a really, really close four race. Um, Kent's new car was really, really fast around here. And uh, we had a really good battle, but the three cars are very, very similar in their handling. And uh, it makes a very exciting drive and, and exciting races. Nose to tail, side by side. Generally not much contact either, and I really like that because the cars aren't cheap and, um, you know, we, we own and run our own cars by ourselves. Not much contact, but plenty of close quarters racing in the Castrol BMW Race Series. Two rounds to go in the championship. The titles are up for grabs.